Welcome everyone to my uh, Practice 2020 presentation uh, where I'll be looking at the technique and muscular demands of surfboard paddling, the methods behind the madness. Uh, my thesis flow uh, will be divided into three uh, different chapters. Um, chapter 1, the introduction, 2, 3, and then four and five being my uh, two separate studies, and chapter six will be a discussion, conclusion, and practical application. Um, but within this presentation, I'm only going to focus on chapter three, which is the method section. Um, so the presentation will be outlined as follows. I'll start with the background, and I'll jump into the participants, uh, going to procedures, the data collection, and data analysis. Um, so, just a bit of background information on surfboard paddling. So, paddling and surfing is what uh, running is to sports like rugby, hockey, soccer, even cricket. It's not, not, not just only necessary to perform the sport, but it also influences your performance in the sport. Um, surfers spend approximately 50% of their time paddling, and on top of that, Multiple uh, researchers have found that uh, paddling uh, results in injuries to the shoulder and the lower back. Um, taking all of this into account, it's uh, quite bizarre to find that there's such a small amount of studies actually using electromyography analysis in order to uh, determine the techniques of neuromechanical control in surfboard paddling. The studies that have util or that have done muscle activation patterns only utilize non-ecological paddling environments, which is things like paddling on a swim bench ergometer. All those that have paddled in a more ecological environment, like a swim flume, only investigated a few muscles. So my first study will aim to analyze and compare the kinematics and muscle activation patterns between paddling on an ergometer, as you can see there and paddling in still water, uh, which is the pool, a pool in this case. We will also aim to analyze and compare these variables between males and females. Study 2 similarly, similarly will analyze and compare the kinematics and muscle activation patterns while paddling uh, in steady state, uh, at a steady state rate in still water versus sprint paddle in the still water as you can see at the bottom there. So just quickly jumping into the participants, um, for the study I need 12 males and 12 females aged between, the, between 18 to 50 with at least 5 years of surfing experience and at the moment surfing approximately twice a week. Um, other than that they need to be free from any injury or illness that will prevent them from actually performing um, at the best of their ability. Um, when the participants come in, I also check at their surfboard volume, make sure that their volume actually sits within uh, these volumes, so being an intermediate to advanced board at least. So someone using a beginner or an intermediate beginner board uh, wouldn't be allowed to actually participate in the study. Um, so going through the whole procedures of the study, it takes approximately two hours to complete both study one and study two. So what I actually do is I, um, I actually uh, collect the data for study one and study two in one go, in one succession, um, mostly because uh, of uh, COVID-19, as all of you guys know. Uh, which means I'm only allowed to do one participant in a seven day period and asking people to come in for more than one day is just going to extend um, the period in which I collect my data over, su over such a big time. So yeah, you can do, basically do the maths. Uh, 12 or 24 participants is 24 weeks. That's quite a few months just to try and get my data collection that I haven't even analyzed or um, write written anything uh, from it so yeah it's, it's going to take a bit of a while so um, doing both studies in one go so looking at study one uh, participants come in on the first day and they have to fill in um, information uh, documents uh, or the informed consent before they're allowed to participate 
and also do a health questionnaire and because of the COVID related th uh, disease I also need to do a work safe procedure with them so they need to, to fill in uh, read and sign that consent as well after that they complete a RAM test as you can see there within the lab um, so I fit them with a uh, heart rate monitor they then paddle on the RAM uh, or on the ergometer for approximately 6 to 10 minutes um, until volitional exhaustion or until I tell them to physically stop um, I do this in order to actually determine their peak heart rate. So just a quick interesting fact, peak heart rate lying down and peak heart rate standing up is two different things. So I need to do it in an environment that's as similarly as possible uh, as paddling in water. Um, so after collecting that, I give the participants adequate rest where after I do electrode placement on them. So as you guys can see, well, there's the heart rate, uh, just the receiver at the back and the monitor being on the chest at the front. Um, I place 10 of these electrodes on 10 different muscles, um, except those two are the same muscle, just one being left and one being right. Um, and then I have to water seal or waterproof all these electrodes as none of them are waterproof. And it's quite expensive to have to replace that uh, out of my own pocket. Um, after I've done that, I jump back onto the ERG. We do a steady state paddle, which lasts about three to four minutes. When they finish the steady state paddle, um, they have the opportunity. Uh, so they paddle until they reach 75% of that heart rate peak, which we calculated in the RAM test. Um, and then they paddle in that window for about 20 seconds. Uh, after that, we go down to the pool and we do the same thing in the pool. So the participants paddle down the left-hand side, make a huge turn, come back down on the right-hand side, make a huge turn on this side again, and they paddle around until they hit that 75% steady state window that I need. And then I record two laps of them going down uh, on the left-hand side. So I need to do two recordings. That's from the participants' right-hand side. Um, study two. Uh, follows the same procedures at the ramp, electrode placement. Uh, the only difference is the steady state in the pool is condition one for the study. And after that, they do a sprint paddle. So they have a five meter build up. As soon as they get to that orange gun, they need to be at their full paddling velocity. Um, I then record 15 meters of them paddling at that velocity uh, in the pool. So data collection, I collect four different types of uh, data. So first one being the descriptive is things like uh, height, weight, um, the board volume, the surf experience, um, competitions the surfer has uh, been or competed in. Then I do heart rate data, um, as I mentioned, just having that uh, heart rate sensor on. I do kinematic data, which is the video footage as you've seen, and the EMG data, which is those electrodes that I've showed you. Um, so this is just making it a bit more clearer. So the electrodes are placed on 10 different muscles, first one being the pectoralis major, uh, second one being the biceps brachii, third is the triceps brachii, which you can see at the back there. Um, then we also do the middle deltoid, posterior deltoid, the upper trap, uh, upper trap, middle trap, latissimus dorsi, and then the left and right erector spinae. Um, this is just to show you how the kinematic data looks. So I've got a GoPro camera for the all the paddling on the ergometer. So this is just recording from the right hand side as the participant is paddling uh, along. Whereas in the pool, I've got two GoPro cameras, one below the water, one above the water, and walking with the sturdy pole alongside the shoulder of the participant as they paddle down. Um, so that's how I collect my kinematic data. Uh, my data analysis, um, I've got different steps that I need to follow to actually complete that. So just a quick overview of them. First of all, I need to determine the phases. Secondly, export that uh, the EMG data into Excel, plot the phase starts in Excel, normalize the EMG data in Excel, and then calculate the variables from them. 
So first of all, just defining the phases. For study one, I only have two phases. So the first one being the propulsive phase, which starts at where the wrist is at the furthest anterior position to the shoulder, or in this case, to where the marker is on the board. And so that length I'm using to start to determine the start of the propulsive phase. So that goes through underneath then um, until the hand is at the furthest posterior position. Um, so that's where the line from that side to that side is the furthest back again from where the wrist is. Um, then they go into their, so that is the start of the recovery phase as they go across then. Um, study two, I have uh, four distinct phases I'm actually uh, dividing it in. Uh, so the main reason I'm doing two phases in study one is the fact that there's no, I can't do a hand entry uh, where the hand en enters or exits the water on the swim bench ergometer. So for study two, I can actually have more applicable phases. So if the hand entry is where the hand touches the, or hand actually enters the water. The pull phase is at that furthest anterior position. The push phase will start where the arm is 90 degrees to the uh, angle of the board and then the recovery for, so that will be the push phase the recovery phase is when the hand exits the water and the recovery phase uh, so yeah the recovery phase is then exits the water and goes back to hand entry so that will be one complete cycle um, so as soon as after I've uh, collected all the data um, I have to go into a program called Dartfish uh, where what I which I use to actually make those measurements and determine when the phases start. So as you can see, measured it up uh, to those wrist mask markers. I get a time in seconds there or there. So I record the time and I record the distance uh, of the reach. Then, um, unfortunately, I don't have a photo of the start of the recovery, but that will just be with the wrist at this more or less at this position on the way up. Uh, which will be the furthest posterior, so I get a time for that as well, um, and also the distance from that marker to where the wrist is then. After that, I go back to my EMG data. So this is how the data looks that I record. Um, so it just gives you all these squiggly lines. Technically, it actually only gives you all those lots of lines you see at the top there. I, do, I then do a root mean square calculation, which then gives smooths it all out, makes all the data positive, which you can actually start doing something with. Um, I then export this data to go into Excel, which then just gives me thousands and thousands of data points because I'm collecting the data at 2000 hertz. So that's 2000 lines or 2000 points for each second, and that's 10 muscles. So you can do the math on how many uh, data points there is. I then plot the face dodge for each stroke. So I, using that uh, dartfish program, I then uh, say, oh, okay, that first propulsive face starts at this time point. I then go through all of them, and then I copy them into this raw data sheet over here, um, which then goes through formulas to round uh, all the data and count exactly how many data points there is for each stroke. After I've done that, I need to, to normalize the data. So, uh, see, for example, they have 3,100 data points. That one I only have 2,820. I need to make them the same. So, I'm averaging them to a percentage from 0 to 100 by jumping by 0.5%. So, I normalize it. And then after that, I calculate, I have put down all the eight strokes, I average strokes two to eight just for the running window, and then I can start plotting them on the graphs. Um, and then after I've done all of that, I actually start calculating the variables that I need. So I need the stroke length in seconds, the phase length, so exactly how long the propulsive and the recovery phase is, or the four phases within study two. I then determine the peak muscle activation, uh, just the formula again in Excel, and I then uh, determine the burst onset, offset, and length, which is also formulas that I use uh, from Excel to determine where that onset and offset point is, and the total length then of uh, in seconds then or milliseconds at the end of the day. Um, if you wish to participate and meet the inclusion criteria, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me. 
uh, there is my email address. Thanks, guys.